This is a short presentation on how to do secure mobile phone banking. Firstly, you must make sure that the software on your mobile phone is up to date. This means following all prompts for updating your phone as they come in, even at the expense of having some delays in order to do the install. While these new versions of the software are being installed, you'll get all the necessary security patches at the same time. Secondly, you must make sure that when you open your mobile phone, there is a security hurdle to cross. That is, your phone should ask you for a PIN or a pattern, and these days uh, typically biometrics such as fingerprint and face recognition. Make sure you're using one of these features. Then we come to the banking app itself. This is provided to you from your bank or financial institution, and you should use this trusted and secure app only to do banking with a particular bank. It will probably prompt you quite sensibly to use a strong and unique password when you run that phone app and it will probably also prompt you to use two-factor authentication such as SMS security or other method whereby a second security hurdle is required each time you open your banking app. Third, you must make sure that when you do your online banking on your phone with your banking app, the way you ac access the internet is crucial as well. Make sure you're using mobile data, i.e. you're using the phone connecting to the mobile phone supplier at a cell tower. Do not ever use a public Wi-Fi network or any other unsecured network to do online banking. Once you've used your app, and you'll see a demo in the moment on the features that are available to you, uh, make sure still you constantly check your account activity. You can do it by the minute if need be on your mobile phone and of course check your statements for any unauthorized transactions that may crop up there and contact your bank immediately. By following these simple rules you can enjoy the convenience and security of online banking on your mobile phone. I'm now going to demonstrate the Westpac online banking app. I would like to do it in live mode, but of course that will reveal a lot of financial details of my own, which I need to keep hidden. So instead I've done it as a series of screen dumps with my personal details blanked out. When you launch your online banking app securely using a PIN or some biometric information, this is the first page you typically see. It's a list of all your accounts with the bank. You can individually select any of your accounts to see the transactions, including your credit cards and debit cards. Notice there's also a very useful search capability. So if you're searching for particular transactions, you use that. And note, you can actually click on the microphone icon and speak your search. The Probably the most important button is at the top right, the sign out button. Don't forget to click that when you're finished using your online app. Let's assume I've clicked on my Westpac Choice bank account, which is the main transactional account. And 
this is what you'll see effectively the last few transactions that are done on your account I've shown a few different types here like paying to uh, another bank account doing online shopping an actual government credit coming in from Centrelink you can of course keep tabs on your tap and pay transactions immediately after you've performed them so you can be sure they've gone through or not and there's a very useful filter button which allows you to just show debits credits and other selected types of transactions if you scroll down further on that particular page of course you can get to all past transactions you can also see useful information like upcoming payments you can see your card settings and any documents such as statements are available there and, and on the right you'll see if what happens if you click the statements you can get a current uh, electronic statement of your balances or you can go and look at individual monthly statements or quarterly statements uh, whichever you like and they're displayed on on the screen and so you can go back in time to any of your previous statements one of the very useful features I find is the ability to access information about your credit cards and debit cards here's my credit card information notice you can click on show all button to see exactly what's on your card and increasingly banks are offering what they call dynamic uh, CVCs the little three digits on the back of your card here Westpac is changing that once per day uh, for security reasons and this allows you to show the current dynamic CVC if you want to do online transactions for example and should there be a problem with your card you can lock it you can report it stolen you can change your pin etc and notify if you're going overseas so the bank knows that transactions will be coming in from a different country uh, another very useful feature is of course the, the tap and pay capability you have to add your particular card to your wallet whether it be on your Apple phone or your Google phone in this case it allows me to add the card to Google Pay which is what I use for tap and go or I could use Samsung Pay and depending on your phone there may be other wallets that are available all of which allow you to do tap and pay I thought I'd just mention my pet way of paying of course which is pay ID and this allows you to pay instantly from your account to someone else's account by using a simple ID such as a phone number or an email of the person you're trying to pay and of course you can have various other payment options more traditional options like uh, BPay, pay someone which is uh, direct bank account to bank account where you need to know the details of the other bank account and various other options depending on your bank this is an example of using pay ID again when you go to the payments button on your home page of your banking app you then can select the various types of payment here I've chosen pay ID since I've used pay ID with a number of pays um, uh, they're listed here but if they're not there you can create a new one you select the payee 
you then get the middle screen uh, and you can select the amount and notice there are three extra fields you can use all of which are optional you can put information in to the person you're paying you can put information into the transaction in your own account and if necessary if a reference number is required like the invoice number for example you can put that in notice that this payment is going to be using OSCO remember that's the instant payment uh, capability which means that as soon as you click that pay button it will transfer the funds from your account to the person you're paying uh, just to show you that it's very easy to create a new pay ID of your own and uh, there on the right is uh, you, you select uh, uh, a suitable payment number. Then for other types of payment, you can see a very wide range of methods to pay. Notice in the case of pay ID again, there are different types of pay ID. There's mobile numbers or landline numbers or emails or ABNs and an organization can even create a pay ID of their own. This is the feature I would hope our residence committee might consider. Wouldn't it be lovely to be able to just get your phone out and pay them instead of having to have cash in hand. That's just my opinion of course. Then you can pay into any bank account. This is what I use, for example, to pay my fitness instructor, Rochelle. It's what I use to pay the hairdressers, he, here at Cypress Gardens. And again, you just go into the appropriate screen, you enter the amount, and you type in the descriptions that you need. There are, of course, many more options available in a typical online banking application. You can get your net position at any time. You can look at upcoming payments. You can see exactly the flow of all your cash payments. Uh, and you can categorize your spending. Just remember, this is a secure feature. The banks are making sure it is as secure as possible. You can see an extensive range of features. The really big benefit is you can do this banking on your phone at any time of the day or night, both at weekends and non-business days. However, there's usually a very small period, typically in the early hours of Sunday morning, when the banking systems are doing their upgrades and installation of new features where it won't be available but it's essentially 24-7, 365 days a year service. Of course you'll see with the great effort being put into these online banking applications that the banks are trying to replace a typical bank branch with your mobile phone basically and the number of actual physical branches are ever decreasing for all of the banks and they're hoping you can do all your banking by your mobile phone including asking questions and getting answers to unusual problems so there is my very quick overview of an online banking app and what you can do and I hope it encourages you to use these services in the future.